Wow, guys, look at this. This is after quite a bit of, you know, erasing and drawing and erasing, but it finally settled on this. We've got a nice long blade, a tall primary bevel, a sharpened clip. We're gonna do a textured copper overlay wrapped around the spine with homemade copper rivets. I'm gonna hand forge the D-shaped guard with a hammered finish, and then I'm gonna make this hardwood handle out of one piece of wood, and I'm gonna carve a relief like this showing the ribs right here and this will be a smooth hardwood section to show the beautiful grain of the wood and then I'm going to stipple this and make it a different color and then I'm going to do a ghosted hamon on the main portion of the blade. This is going to be so cool. So let's stop fussing around and start to build this bad boy. First thing you're going to want to do after you profile the knife is do your layout for all your different features while you have a nice flat piece of stock. So we're going to lay out the holes for the copper overlay. These holes we definitely want in precise location so I've scribed them and now we're going to drill all four of the holes out in sequence. Let's scribe the center line for the main bevels, and then we're going to carefully start grinding in the main portion of the bevels. The trick here with the blade this long is to go nice and steady across the entire surface, all the way from the hilt to the tip, to try to not remove any more material in one spot. So you certainly don't want to dwell in any one spot. get this side hand sanded. I'm hand sanding this out before I heat treat it this time because I want the hamon to really pop. So I'm hand sanding it and I'm going to go ahead and clay it up. And it's got a super awesome thunder and lightning storm tonight. This thing is profiled, the bevel, the swedge, they're all ground in, they're finished sanded to 220 grit, and then I went ahead and clayed it up with Satanite. Fancy. That last little bit, what I did is I slowly, I left the, the power feed on this direction and I just slowly raised the quill to help me remove most of the material. I did that all manual. Well, this is where we're at. Came out super nice so far. This is the top of the guard. This is the part that'll curl forward. And then this will curl backwards. And this is the bottom. Now listen, I've left the extra material on the bottom so that after I wrap it around, I can make it the exact same shape as the bottom of the handle. That way you don't have any rough spots. And then I am gonna go for a textured hammer finish on all of this, so I'll be breaking all these edges with hammer blows while I heat it and bend it. 
and I think it's going to be really cool. But that's the D-Guard. It's fairly hefty, which is good because it's going to balance out that big, huge blade that we have. Well, this is quite literally the fifth time that I've hand sanded this knife and I still don't have it worked all the way up to a good 220. I've worked on it, I've reshaped it, I've worked on it, I fitted some pieces, I fitted the guard, I've added new dings and pits and yeah. So let's sand it again. I wanted to show you what the hamon looked like right out of the etchant. You can see I got a nice edge across the top nice edge across the bottom all the way down to the back of the knife now on this one i decided i wanted to do something totally different something i've never done before and what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this blade now and i'm going to polish it with mothers and then i'm going to put it through a, another temper cycle the same temperature that i tempered it the first time so it's not going to change the makeup of the structure of the steel by doing this what it's going to do is it's going to give it back the color that you get through the tempering cycle. That kind of bluish color that uh, you get it between 400 and 425 degrees on the steel. So I'm going to polish this and then I'm going to run it through temper. I'm going to try it at 400 for an hour and see what it looks like. And if, if it's not really the color that I want, I might bump it to 425 for an hour. I'm going to experiment with this temper idea. I'm going to throw it in and we're going to retemper this and see what it looks like. I mean, I run the risk of having to do this entire thing over again. I could have to sand this whole thing out again, but I'm willing to take that risk because I think it's going to just make this thing pop. Are you guys ready for this? Right out of the temper cycle. Oh, look at that color. That's exactly what I wanted. I think it looks amazing. But look at the banding that I got from the oven rack. That's a bummer. So. I'm going to fix that. I'm going to redo this blade right now. I'm going to polish it back out, re-sand it if I have to, re-etch it, get it back to blank again. And then this time when I put it in the oven, I'm going to put it on a tray and keep it upright so that this color can uniformly come across the entire blade and I don't have these stripes. All right, it's completely sanded back out. I'm glad I, this happened to me because when I re-sanded it, I found scratches right here and right here on both sides and a couple throughout here that were just tiny but I did find some scratches so I'm glad that I had to redo it and now those scratches are gone let's re-etch it and go through the process
<laughs> That's perfect. Now, if we can get another three. Let's move back to the plan. Here's this. We stuck pretty close to our plan. So far, everything came out just the same. I did hand forge this and it came out a little different. Actually, I liked it better giving it just a little more of a, of a turned out end at the bottom down here. Obviously, this is extra material that I'll cut off as I shape the handle. This is the block that I've chosen for the handle material. I think it complements this copper really nice. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and trim the front face of this so it matches this angle and then we're going to bore out the center for the tang so that this will slide on. I'm trying to give you quick little updates as I go. Now I've got the front edge of the block trimmed to the correct angle and the rear edge of the block trimmed to the correct angle. Boom! The handle materials on there. So now we can mark out the shape of the handle that we want and go ahead and trim it to size. There's a couple things that I didn't get to show in the video. One was making this cool end cap for the pommel, and the other was how I made this handle. Unfortunately, a lot of you guys are going to be upset that I didn't show you how to make this handle, but it's an easy solution. All you have to do is just subscribe to the channel. Click subscribe because I make videos about how to do this stuff all the time, almost on a weekly basis. So if you're interested in how I did this and you want to see more in-depth procedures on this kind of stuff, click subscribe and then when I upload a video, you'll be notified. Oh, many of you know, I love leather work. I love to do leather work. It's probably equally as fun to me to do the leather work as it is to make the knife. I don't think a knife is a knife. It's not complete until it has a home to live in. So yes, I believe that the sheath is half of a knife. That's why I take pride in making my sheaths. When I make a knife, I make a sheath that equally complements the knife and its style. And I think this one definitely fit the bill. What do you think, guys? That's super cool, right? Oh yeah. Oh, ho, ho, ho. It's just awesome. The sheer awesomeness of this knife is ridiculous. You've got that ghosted Hamon line. Look at that. Everything just came out like I intended it to. Nice handle. Look at this. When you grab it forward like this, this just tucks into this area in your hand and it makes it super stabby. It really changes the entire uh, weight of the knife and it changes the entire dynamic of the knife when you move into that forward position. So awesome. Utterly freaking cool. I love this feel. This is real choppy when you hold the knife like this, but if you just throw your finger forward, it's amazing how it changes everything and makes it more stabby stabby instead of choppy choppy. So really cool. It's almost like two knives in one with this forward grip that I put on it just like that. That's, uh, that's really neat. I love this knife. I love how it turned out. 